गुड मॉर्निंग वेलकम टू द न्यू सीरीज ऑफ द पेडोंटल लेक्चर्स एट द हेड डेंटल एकेडमी आई एम डॉक्टर जॉन गाजिम आई एम द पेडोंटिस्ट हियर एट द हेड डेली एंड द मोहाली ब्रांच सो एज यू हैव सीन आवर प्रीवियस वीडियोस अबाउट द स्प्रिंटिंग द प्रोबिंग डेप्थ देन समथिंग अबाउट द क्यूरेटाज टुडे वी हैव वन मोर लेक्चर सीरीज दैट इज ऑन द टॉपिक ऑफ द क्राउन लेंथ ओके सो यू मस्ट हैव हर्ड अबाउट लॉट ऑफ ऑफ द related to the what is the crown height what is the tissue height what is the bone height so what is all about this crown and i'll give you just a brief about this okay whenever a patient comes to you for a capping or when you see a crowning okay so for example this is a tooth which has been treated for a rct okay you have done the obturation you have done the post -tendor. now you want to press a crown so what the first thing you will say you will tell the patient to close the mouth and you will first thing you will check the interocclusal distance now why it is necessary you must have seen you are working in the clinic many time in a college department may time patient comes in the proper department that my crown has been chipped off my crown has come off many times usual patient complains of that i have put a crown now the second third day it has been long very very long and some high points are there which is causing him pain So why this crown chipping off, crown coming off so frequent? Why this which coming off high point is so frequent? Why? Because we don't check the interocclusal height. This is the main problem. Just filling the cavity and doing the bar round all the corners is not the crown cutting. You have to check the interocular distance. Either the space between the two teeth. For example, the most common crown in India is the PFM, porcelain fused metal. Okay, people have it. People have zirconia also. So, but the most common is the PFM. Now, what is PFM? P is the porcelain that is 1.5 mm, and M is the metal that is 1.5 mm. So, 3 mm is the total length and the width of the crown. So, means if you have a opposing full height second molar and you're doing crown cutting on this 37 second molar, so at least first of all you need here 3 mm for the new crown, and then your height for the new crown will be there. So, at least 3 mm gap should be there. Between these two molars, okay. If you don't have the gap, what will happen? When you will put a crown, patient will say he is having high contacts. Then you will trim that crown. And some people I have seen they trim the opposite crown also. That is totally wrong. If you don't have the height, either do a post encore or crown lengthening. Don't trim the opposing teeth. Patient has sensitivity after one two weeks, and he will get a review. from the other dentist or they will have some problem that this is totally a wrong what done by dentist this all whole problem is because of the inadequate distance between the two crown length so this is about the crown length okay why the crown length now how to do avoid it always remember there are certain measurements for the maxilla and the mandible it is not just like random you do any crown length for maxilla you require more height for mandible you require less height why it is like because in mandible you know you have a cortical bone the bone is very very thick maxilla you have a spongy bone so bone shrinks very very fast so require more additional length of the crown okay so now i will tell you what is the measurements what is the total length of the all you require during your crown lengthening this is your william probe i hope you must have seen this mark and you are seeing this mark right now also whenever you do start crown lengthening always measures this pocket always remember mesial mid buccal distal then you go on to the lingual as i told you in the previous video okay why it is necessary you want to see how much of bone is there okay why to see bone necessary because you will take a x ray if the bone is healthy bone healthy means it is around cj or maximum 1 mm below cj bone is healthy you can do adequately bone cutting in crown lengthening always remember bone cutting is very very necessary okay one thing is there which is called genivectomy you just take a blade okay and what you do you mark it like this phaco cervically scalloping incision and then you remove this part of the gingiva this is genivectomy after this what you do you take your this periosteal elevator and you try to raise this flap mesially mid buccally distally okay when the flap elevator is elevated you take your burrs you take your this erotor or the micromotor mostly micromotor is preferred and mostly the burr which is taken always remember is the flat and round this is the most preferred burr okay 
because the round bird is also good but some articles say that the round bird creates some pitting okay so mostly the flattened bird is mostly preferred for the bone cutting now how much bone cutting is done at least for the mandible 2 to 3 mm bone cutting is done all along the distal areas mid buccal area and the medulla same as the lingual lingual less bone cutting is preferred because we have a lot of blood vessels same in the maxilla bone cutting in maxilla is more why again because of the spongy bone so in bone cutting mandible is less 1 to 2 mm in maxilla it is more and then when finally you have done the genivectomy you have raised the flap you have done the bone cutting you inspect the area you inspect the height if the adequate height is there you can suture the flap if you want more height again you can elevate the flap and you can do the bone cutting in all the areas now one question might be arising in your mind that why bone cutting is so necessary we can just take this blade and we can march in gingiva remove then get a height always remember if you just do a genivectomy and you suture it what will happen bone is at the same place after one two weeks again gingiva will cover that place and you will have the same height as the previous so in most clinics mostly departments mostly colleges always a full crown lending is done only by a bone cutting you cannot do genivectomy and you will gain the height okay you have to do the bone cutting in every cases so main is the measurement you have to measure the height now always remember sometime you have to see how much measurement of tooth should be there is a very common question i mean in your need pg exams in your interviews at least 6 to 7 mm of bone of tooth should be there in the maxilla and the mandible at least 6 to 7 mm of the tooth should be there so when the patient clenches his teeth like this and you check the distance at least 6 7 mm of tooth mm or 7 mm of tooth should be there if 6 mm of tooth is there it means it tooth has a adequate height and you can place a crown and also check between the intraocular distance if you have intraocular distance 3 4 mm you have tooth height 6 7 mm you can go for crown cutting very easily this is the one part second part how much bone cutting should be there and is bone cutting successful in every patient always remember if the tooth or the part of the tooth which you are doing crown lending if the x-ray shows that the bone loss is there and clinically you see that patients having grade 2 mobile grade 3 mobile crown lending will not be successful as you know if there is no bone or less bone there is no purpose of doing bone cutting you are destroying the bone and the pedonchium of that tooth okay so crown lending is mostly successful in grade 1 mobile tooth grade 2 mobile tooth. okay you can adequately do crown bone cutting you will get the height and then after one two weeks of healing you can do with your crown replacement crown lending you can do with your blade or you have the lasers also we will try to discuss in lecture okay by both techniques you can do the crown lending always remember this is the very frequent part of a clinical practice the crown the bridge this very frequent comes in a clinical practice crown chip off crown getting off so try to attend these lectures try to come visit our academy to see how the students are working here doctors are working here frequently on independently on directly on the patients these procedures and then you get a better insight on these issues i hope you have got a better uh, in view of this crown lending we will try to cover one surgical video also on this so that you can get a more insight about this topic okay thank you